This video demonstrates hot mix asphalt contractor coring. In North Dakota, cores are cut from the road to determine the average density of the in-place asphalt pavement. This is important to do because pavement density is a key factor in roadway quality. The number of cores needed is based on a unit of measurement called a sublot. A sublot is defined as a single lift, one paver width wide and 2,000 feet long. Two cores are cut from each sublot. A lot is defined as the entire day's paving. The averages of all sets of cores within the sublots are combined and then averaged. That final value is compared to the specification requirements for that project. Core locations are determined by a representative of the North Dakota DOT using a random method. Once determined, the random locations are written on the state form number 10071, Compaction Control. That form is taken to the field and the DOT inspector marks the locations on the roadway for the contractor's coring crew. The sample number assigned to each core is marked on the road. If a location is within one foot of the pavement edge, an alternative location is selected by the engineer. Coring should not begin until sufficient cooling has been achieved to prevent damage to the road and cores. Typically, coring is completed early the morning following paving and must be completed no later than the next working day. The rest of this video shows you how cores are obtained, how the core holes are filled after removal for testing, and how the contractor saws the core to remove the layer for testing. To conduct the test, you need a coring machine, water, scoop, spatula, tamper, and core extraction tool. You also need a representative asphalt mix to fill the holes. Additionally, you need a wax pen to label the cores and a box or container to transport the cores. A coring machine may be mounted on the back of a vehicle as you will see here, or connected to a pull-behind trailer. The core bit is 4 or 6 inches in diameter. The contractor's coring personnel and the DOT inspector will meet at the pre-marked coring locations. The coring machine will be placed at the designated location set in place and the motor started. The water is also started. The bit is lowered and once it is in contact with the roadway surface, it is important to maintain a constant downward pressure. The core bit must be at right angles to the pavement surface to ensure that the resultant core is reasonably straight. Do not force the bit through the pavement. Excess or inconsistent pressure may result in uneven cores that will be difficult to remove. Each core is drilled through the full depth of the pavement. The second core should be drilled at least 6 inches but not more than 12 inches from the first core in the longitudinal direction of the roadway. Once the cores have been drilled, they are removed or extracted. An extraction tool may be helpful if one is available. A spatula or screwdriver may also be used. Be careful not to damage the core. After removing the cores, label each one to represent the sample number. Place the cores in a suitable container for transport. Once all of the cores have been obtained, they are transported to the contractor's field lab by the DOT inspector. At the field lab, the contractor's personnel uses a masonry saw to cut the core to remove the layer that represents the previous day's paving. All other layers are discarded. The remaining layer is retained and the DOT's tester will determine the density of the core according to T166, bulk specific gravity of compacted asphalt using saturated surface dry specimens. This contractor created a custom device to secure the core while cutting. The device held the core securely and provided a space for the saw blade. Once the DOT's tester completes testing, the result of each core is recorded on state form number 10071, Compaction Control. Then, the average is calculated. 
The calculated average is then transferred to state form number 59132, density pay factor, for the final calculations. The final step in the coring process is to fill the holes. Specifications require that core holes are filled before the next layer of pavement is placed. If no additional layers are placed, the holes must be filled within 24 hours of obtaining the core. Remove any freestanding water before filling the holes. A shop vac is used in this video to easily remove the water. Fill the holes in 2 inch layers using material obtained from the same mix design used on the roadway. Compact each layer using a hand tamper. The finished core area should be level with the surrounding area and closely resemble the texture and appearance. Taking a little extra care to properly fill the core holes will help protect the life of the new road. Underfilled holes can collect water, freeze, and then cause potholes. Overfilled holes will cause a bump in the road or be torn off by a snowplow. 